so that they don't think that today's the day. Yeah, and obviously, uh, Mr. Sholay, uh, the administration's view of Iran and my view of Iran is, is very, very different. Um, I know this will be a point of contention as we move forward through your confirmation process, but I appreciate your answers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Ernst. Senator Blumenthal, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you both for your public service and your families. Uh, Ms. Abercrombie, I'm deeply concerned about the apparent shortfall that we are seeing in ammunition going to Ukraine. Uh, I share and I've expressed very vocally some of the reservations about the past administration delivery, sometimes later than we would like to see, of critical weapons platforms, whether they are armored vehicles, tanks, F-16s, uh, and now ATACMs, which I think are vital. But there should be no question that the 155 millimeter artillery shells are needed to produce at a much heightened rate. We're now producing them, I think, at about one-tenth the volume that the Ukrainians are using them. And they're going to run out of them. We're going to run out of them. That's just one example. What would you do uh, in your role as, in effect, the main Pentagon official in charge of acquisition to speed and increase the production of key defense supplies that are needed by the Ukrainians? And would one of those possible measures include building more production capacity in Ukraine? I've spoken to both the White House and I've talked to President Zelensky about it talked to him in Ukraine when I visited last, a uh, number of weeks ago, and here when he visited. And the Ukrainians are ready to build. What they need is the investment to build. They were once the hub of the Soviet Union's defense capabilities, as you know, and they could be again if provided with the capital to do so and the air defense. So two questions. What would you do generally? And what can we do to increase the capacity of Ukraine to build its own production capacity? Senator, thank you for raising this extremely important question. I think from the United States standpoint, a robust and resilient defense industrial base is critical, not just in terms of providing us with capability that we need, uh, providing capability to allies and partners, but sending a strong deterrent signal that we can be agile. And so one way we could do that if confirmed, Senator, in my role would be uh, signaling to industry the demand signal to expand that capacity by putting things on contract. And to that, I'd like to thank this committee in particular for the multi-year procurement authority authorized last year for munitions. I think that helps the Department of Defense send that demand signal to industry to put some of their own skin in the game to build out capacity. Uh, but in terms of working with allies and partners, um, I think we can see uh, an opportunity for expanding the pie, if you will, working with allies and partners to more broadly expand our collective defense industrial base. And so, Senator, um, I, I do think looking at industrial cooperation with Ukraine is a very compelling uh, idea and initiative, and if confirmed, I would look to support that. The, the President, I believe, announced an agreement, uh, a joint weapons production agreement with the Ukrainian government last week three Ukrainian corporations signed agreements with more than 2,000 U.S. Def defense companies to rebuild Ukraine's defense capacity. What can be done to expedite those agreements and to arrive at more of them? Senator, yes. Um, I think the, the White House uh, was made that announcement uh, when President Zelensky was here, as you noted. I think one thing we can do is use our um, uh, engagement with U.S. American industry to facilitate some of those partnerships. We can't make decisions on behalf of industry, certainly, but we can lend the U.S. government support uh, for any potential co-production or co-development Are there changes in the Defense Production Act that need to be done to increase both the production capacity in the United States of our own industrial base, uh, as well as those of, for example, our allied nations, the, the NDAA of 2024 includes now Australia and the UK right. 
But what about Ukraine? Um, Senator, I think if confirmed, I'd pledge you to look into that working with my colleagues in the Industrial Base Policy Office. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Blumenthal. Senator Scott, please. Sir. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> First off, uh, congratulations on your nominations. Thanks for your willingness to serve. 